Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, and would you look at that temperature? It is minus two out. Um, I didn't think it was supposed to get that warm today, but that is great. Um, but unfortunately, looking at the forecast, it's going to be uh, mid mid March. It's still going to be about uh, minus eight to minus eighteen. So. Uh, it's uh, it's not coming very soon. So this video is about chickens. Uh, now we learned something fairly recently, well, something that we knew, um, but we just never had it in practice. Um, now with the chickens, we have noticed that they have, uh, you know, they haven't had a lot of feathers. So they've been missing feathers. Now there was one problem that we had was uh, a hen that liked to pick at the other hens. So we removed her uh, a month, month and a half ago, uh, and, and things were getting better, but they just weren't getting as good as they should be. Um, so um, we'll go inside and I'll show you the reason why. So we have the new fan up. So this fan was uh, something that I mentioned before that failed, or the old fan failed. And this window you can actually see out and see the animals out there. Uh, because we've got air movement on the window and of course because of the uh, warmer temperature. Uh, so we have that fan up, which is something that you want to put um, if you have ice build up on a door or uh, in a building. Actually there's quite a bit of the ice that has been melting. Combination of air movement and of course the fan. Now the reason why grab this um, so bur wow, these are, guineas are loud guineas what is going on here let me come in why all the noise wow okay well hopefully uh, hopefully you can hear me <laughs> Okay, um, so birds, um, so there was the feathers that were missing. Now, um, there is, you know, they are looking a lot better. This one here has a few that are out, uh, but most of the hens uh, are all uh, feathering up nicely. So they've got uh, lots of feathers happening. And what we had realized, so Tara was watching the camera for Bronwyn. Uh, because, of course, we didn't know if she was pregnant, she was showing signs of pregnancy, nothing yet, by the way. Um, but she noticed, you know, she'd get up in the middle of the night, she'd go and she'd check the camera, and she noticed that this light was on. It was always on. So we've got this light here because, uh, of course, during the winter months, especially in December, uh, we only get about, what is it, about eight hours of uh, sunlight per day. Um, now, of course, the birds are inside as well. So we use that light. It's a nice white uh, 5,000 Kelvin temperature uh, bright white bulb uh, to simulate sun uh, so that they continue their egg production. But what was happening was the light was on 24 hours a day and these girls were just wired. Uh, they weren't getting any sleep, they weren't relaxing, so they were getting stressed out. Um, so we took a look at the timer that we had that was set to 15 hours. So usually about 14 to 15 hours uh, is what you want to have for your, uh, for your hens so that they keep laying. Uh, and we realized that this timer was broken. Uh, it was just stuck in the on position and not working. So I'll have to replace this. Um, but what uh, Tara did is she unplugs it. So it's just a plug-in that's here. She's been manually unplugging it. Uh, or plugging it in in the morning and then unplugging it at night. So currently the birds are only getting maybe about uh, 10 hours of daylight per day. Um, we've noticed a significant drop in egg production, which is fine uh, because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're now getting their rest and they're not so stressed. Uh, so we've got a bunch of eggs that are still in the fridge. That's fine. Um, we'll just let the girls kind of recoup. Uh, and then, of course, spring will be here uh, soon, so, so they'll be happy to see that and get outside. 
Um, so that's the reason. So uh, if you have birds and, and they're not laying eggs, usually a good egg layer will lay 300 eggs a, a year. Um, so you want to make sure that they have the lighting. And if they don't have the lighting, um, you can uh, uh, stimulate the egg production by doing that. But just be careful that you don't stress them out. So we do have about 20 chickens or 20 hens. We've probably got just as many, if not more, roosters uh, out in the other building. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is uh, in this environment, it's fairly warm in here. Uh, and it's warm throughout the entire winter uh, just because it's well insulated and the body heat from the animals uh, keeps it uh, warm in here. Uh, now, chickens can handle colder temperatures, but of course when you're collecting eggs and when you're watering the birds, uh, it makes it a little difficult to get unfrozen stuff. Uh, so quite often years ago, when we didn't have the building that we have now, you'd have to go out multiple times a day to make sure that you collected eggs and kind of knew when they laid their eggs. Uh, so that you didn't get frozen, broken eggs. Uh, and then of course the water problem, having a heated water. Uh, in here it's not an issue because it's uh, just above freezing throughout the entire winter. Um, now the roosters that are outside, uh, they are in another building with the ducks and uh, it's relatively warm, uh, maybe gets down to about minus 10 in there. Uh, even with that polar vortex we had uh, a few weeks ago, it remained relatively warm in there. Uh, and the reason for that is again, it's uh, got insulation in the roof section uh, and it does have uh, plastics. So we put poly up on the south side of the building to allow that, uh, that, that sun, that heat from the sun uh, to warm up the building. Uh, so that's helped out quite a bit. Uh, there might be a couple roosters with a little bit of frostbite just on the tips of their cone, but um, everything's, uh, everything's good out there. We'll go out and we'll have a look at them right away as well. Uh, so while I'm in here, I might as well, because you'll want to see it, I know you do, um, we will check in on Bronwyn. Hi Bronwyn. Now I don't think you're pregnant. I'm guessing you're not, and if we had to run the live stream, um, we would have still had it going, but uh, yeah, I don't think you're pregnant, are you? You were showing signs of it though. Um, now there has been some questions about her horns. Uh, so her horns do tuck in around to her neck. They aren't touching. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on that and if need be, we will have to trim it. Um, but I think she is at an age now that uh, her horns have pretty much stopped growing. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, some of you had pointed out that you saw that. That's good. Uh, and we are monitoring it and, uh, and will take action if necessary, right? But your horns are so regal looking. They are very interesting. <laughs> uh, and then of course, little Sheldon. People uh, have been watching some of the older movies, uh, older videos from uh, the spring, wondering, did Sheldon make it? So of course I post in there, well, check the latest video because here he is. So him and Moira, Moira, I'm having problems with her name. I think that's how you say it. Um, they are getting along pretty good. Now Moira is pretty shy. Moira, that's it. I'm trying to pronunciate it too much. Moira. Um, she is, um, she's getting more comfortable with Sheldon. Uh, she was very, um, um, very jumpy when she first came in. Uh, but it's nice that these two get to hang out together. And then of course Fernando too. Um, some of you have mentioned about Fernando. What about little Fernandos? Uh, and uh, are you going to get a mate for him? Well, he has had a few mates and unfortunately he tends to, uh, to go towards the humans more than his own kind, uh, don't you? Um, so I think we are going to get some hens. We may have to lock them in a room with them. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get him some because we're down to just Fernando. Uh, we lost a couple um, of our hens over the past two years and he's the only one left. 
Uh, and of course the guineas are going out. Now also something we're gonna do with the chickens is they just have a small run that is outside. So we want to open them up to a more free range. Uh, of course we could lose some because of that. Uh, just because predators. Uh, now predators are another thing. In our farm area we have uh, electric fencing. Uh, and I did a video on electric fencing as well. Um, so you can watch that video. Uh, and it's predatorial wire fencing, meaning that it is, uh, I believe it's a five wire system. Uh, so we do have cougars in the area and we do have foxes, not too many wolves. Um, but those are the ones that can cause problems. We haven't really had problems here on the farm, uh, likely because of the electric fence. But the problem is, and why we lost one of uh, Fernando's girls, is um, she laid a nest in an area that wasn't inside the electric fence compound. Um, so I think she got it from that. And of course, if any of the hens decide to wander off and go off the property and just over into the bush, uh, they're not safe and they could get, uh, they could get got by some predator out there too. So, um, but electric fence and it works well. And yes, we do have predators. Our main predator concern has been crows uh, for the past number of years. Uh, last year wasn't so bad. Tara went and picked up uh, their tinsel, um, they're for bicycles, girls' bicycles, and they go in the uh, in the handles, and they're these little tinsels. I think she got them from the dollar store, uh, and she stuck them along the fence line, and those seem to be enough of a deterrent, uh, as well as the geese that we have, because they honk quite a bit, and of course, so do the guineas. Uh, if there's any concerns in the yard, the guineas will uh, uh, sure peep up and uh, and then make uh, make them aware that well, oh, there's something going on there. Maybe I'll go to the next neighboring farm. Uh, as well as the lighthouse that we put up uh, late last summer. Uh, so now there's light in that whole pond area. Uh, so predators might not be, you know, too, um, too aggressive to actually go into the light. Uh, they like to generally lurk in the dark. Uh, so let's go outside and uh, see how everybody else is doing. And we will um, check on the boys, the roosters, the band of bros outside. Everybody doing good out here? Billy and Carl. Uh, now these two are going to be going up front probably within the next, uh, I don't know, next few weeks anyway, three, four weeks. Um, we're going to put them back up front because they are, when we have visitors out here, they can be, you know, they can be a little feisty. Um, so they don't bring the calm to the yard like everybody else in here does. Hey. Hi, Lambert. Oh, you got a little bit of a limp. Oh, you got a little bit of a cough. Oh, that's Tinker. You've been sitting too long. Your leg fell asleep. What's up, girl? Got a little cough? There's Turbo. Okay, so we're going to go out here. And Hannibal. Oh, Hannibal. Hi, buddy. Yeah, I don't have any apples for you. Hannibal's all about the apples. He loves apples. Uh, so out here we have our enclosure pens. So we want to do something with this this year. What are you doing, Patches? What are you doing over here? <laughs> um, okay, so this area here is the peafowl and pigeon pen. Uh, now we want to release some of the pigeons, so uh, they do fly around. We have had problems, of course, with crows taking out the pigeons years ago. Uh, but we've got enough of a population now that if, you know, if we lose a couple, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it's nice for them, you know, if you were a bird, if you were a pigeon, wouldn't you like to fly around the yard and be free? Um, so we did make this little opening here, uh, but they just didn't see it. We almost have to block, block it more so they can actually see there's a hole. Um, but we're going to uh, set something up for that, uh, keep some protected inside uh, just to make sure they're happy. Uh, and then coming over to the chicken area, which this is the outdoor chicken run here. You can hear all those roosters in there. Uh, so this is the chicken run in here, and this ground has built up quite a bit. Uh, Tara putting in um, grass and mulch uh, and all kinds of different things. It's built up. So 
that area right over there, we want to open that up. Now that we have an electric fence on the other side so the goats can't get into this area, um, so they'll uh, roam free. Now, what I'd also like to do is once they're out, I'd like to block that off and put the pigs in here. Because uh, the pigs are going to root that up really nicely and turn the soil. And I bet you there's some really nice compost in there. Uh, you can just barely see the door uh, just over there. Uh, so that's the plan for that and possibly building the roof line out to this section here and having kind of a uh, very similar to the shelter we built last year uh, just to have an enclosure that comes across uh, keeping things dry and expanding the area and then possibly having all the geese and the uh, uh, the chickens the roosters um, having them still in there but making a gate or an opening in here so they can come out into this area here very similar to what we've done with the rabbits. I don't know if you can see that right down in there. There's a little flap so the rabbits can come out into their opening in here. Oh no, you stay in! Not yet! Not yet! Yes, okay, so here's all of our roosters in here. Um, you can see there's a little bit of frostbite on the tip of his cone. Uh, how are the other ones doing? This one looks pretty good. This one looks good. It's just mainly the ones that have the, the spiky cones. Actually, all the rest of them look pretty good. Uh, so if, uh, if you're new to this channel, one thing that uh, uh, we found starting out with, it's a little dirty here with fly poop. Uh, but this is a baseboard heater uh, and what we've done here is I took it apart and I changed the calibration on it because if only it goes down to like 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I recalibrated it so it'll turn on at around zero degrees so I can fine tune it. Uh, so there's power that comes into the unit here and then goes back out in each direction to... Uh, well, there's, there's the pl one plug there, and the other plug is on this side over here. So this one plugs into the power, and then this one would plug into a heat lamp that hangs down. And we had it hanging down over top of the watering system, uh, just so that it remained unfrozen. And of course, we could control the temperature. So we had a heat lamp on that side, and we had another heat lamp over on this side hanging down. Uh, and that worked really well. So that was probably one of my uh, my best uh, my best builds early on because it was uh, it was a great way to control the temperature inside a building. Um, so if you want any more information on that, uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, but let me know in the comments. Um, now these guys will be going outside as well. Uh, Tara was thinking, oh, I should put them out today. Uh, but it's going to get really cold again tonight, so we're going to keep everybody in here. And we'll probably um, release these guys. Well, once things start to melt, uh, there's no water out there, so it's not fun out there, guys. There's no water. Yeah, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, and I will be filming their release. Because uh, I imagine that's going to be pretty exciting. They love the water out there. What are you guys doing? Hey! Oh, and the, uh, the, the plucker, where is she? Uh, there she is, there. So this was the, um, the feather plucker that we uh, banished to the, uh, the outbuilding. Uh, and she is uh, in, in good shape, so the, the boys aren't uh, having any problems with her. Uh, roosters. Why are the roosters not fighting? Well, they're not fighting just because... Um, they're the, they're the band of bros. Uh, you put them in and uh, they'll find their, uh, their alpha relationship uh, with, uh, with all the other roosters. You know, some of them may, uh, may fight off a little bit, um, but they tend to, the, uh, the beta will generally run off into the corner and the alpha will be nice and happy. Yes, I know. Are you guys the the alphas? The alpha trios cuz you're up high. You're looking good, boys. 
Yeah, so we get a lot of roosters in just because people don't want roosters, of course, because they don't lay eggs. Um, but uh, a couple years ago, we decided just to let the roosters out, and uh, we'll just call them the Band of Bros. Hi, Willow. I've had comments about your mane. Your wonderful mane. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little dirty now, though. <laughs> Uh, so that's it for out here. Now, it is Saturday. Um, tomorrow on Sunday, Tara is having a seed swap, getting ready for spring. Um, so there's been some comments on the, uh, on the channel that people would like to see something there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end Saturday here. Um, and uh, tomorrow morning when uh, festivities kick off, uh, I'll do some video of that. And um, you'll get a little, uh, a little insight as to uh, what's happening um, and what we're planning on doing in terms of gardening this year. So it's Sunday, it's the next day. Now it may look like a beautiful day outside, but it is minus 19 with uh, a really strong north wind going on. Uh, so overnight we've had 70 kilometer an hour gusts, we've had uh, I, I don't know, probably about an inch of snow that's fallen, uh, which has made the road conditions extremely bad. Uh, thus, we are putting off the uh, seed swap until next weekend. Uh, so we had a few people uh, contact us and say they couldn't get out of their driveway. Uh, so I'm going to take you inside and uh, just kind of go over what we have set up, uh, but that will be going on next weekend. So the setup Tara has for next week seed swap is she has this uh, rack. I think it was actually a shoe rack uh, and it fits these Tupperware containers really securely. Um, so here is, well, um, pictures are worth a thousand words. So she's got them all uh, in here and individually uh, done. So these are all from my understanding heirloom uh, seeds. Uh, so these are just some of them. Um, she's got some other uh, other ones down in here. A bunch of wildflowers. Uh, this is uh, bee balm, pink, uh, and a bunch of other wildflowers and more in here. So she's been doing these are uh, well, these are like starter packs. So a uh, little combination of uh, a bunch of different items in there. Uh, now over here we had a friend of ours from Fresh Forage who does microgreens in the city. So he dropped off some surplus of seeds that he had. Uh, so peas, kale, red clover, purple, uh, kalarbi, if I'm saying that right. Sweet basil, red uh, radishes, mustard, buckwheat, popcorn. Uh, sunflower seeds and of course he dropped off barley uh, which we have uh, a lot of barley out in the barn uh, but uh, Tara figured well okay well we'll pack that up uh, barley is um, good for uh, like it grows really nice out in the rabbit hutch uh, or just outside sorry not the rabbit hutch uh, on the one side of the rabbit hutch in the chicken pen uh, so it grows up and, and terrible regularly. This is another reason why we throw the seed on the ground because whatever the animals don't eat, uh, it grows up and grows some new stuff. Uh, now another thing she is doing is uh, with planting. So she's got this little display here set up. Uh, and this uh, has some soil in it here. And these are, uh, what are we... I completely soil forgot blocker. the name. Soil blocker, right. We were trying to think of the name the other day, we came up with it, but then of course uh, we forgot. Um, so you've got four different uh, blocks in here, uh, and you wet this soil down to a nice consistency, and then you squish that in, uh, get it all inside there, uh, push, the, push the lever, and pop all the blocks out. Uh, so then you make a whole bunch of blocks on a tray, and it has that uh, the little dimple uh, there that you plant your seed in, and then just cover it up. Uh, and those are your soil blocks. Now, there is another way of doing it here, which uses this contraption here. And um, so what happens is, oh, Tara's going to make one. Okay, let's see it in action. This is the final so it's just out of newspaper. 
and you use that and fill it up with soil and there's your little soil blocks instead of using plastic containers to start your seeds uh, you know going a little more, more naturally and using newspaper so what's that atlas is that food no <laughs> okay so she bent it over and squished it into the ridge and that's it there we go uh, so there's a couple different options that we have for doing the uh, doing the planting and getting the seeds ready. Uh, so a few different ideas. And the ideas. cat loves them. And the cat loves them. That's why they're kind of destroyed, some of them, uh, and and were um, were ripped and torn up. So, um, so that's that. So that's a little bit of the goings on for next weekend. Uh, we've also got some, you know, some different reading material uh, that Tara's picked up over the years, all kinds of different gardening magazines, uh, even uh, for dummies. This is gardening for Canadians for dummies. This is a neat trick. <laughs> a take, neat trick. You take a terracotta pot okay. and you put it in your with your plants Okay. and then you water in the terracotta pots and it suck, sucks the water to the bottom. Okay, well there we go. Instead of watering on the top, yeah, fill and, the terracotta pots once a day. And you've got some stuff growing this in here. This is milkweed. This is milkweed. Okay, and, so there's some uh, milkweed in this there. This will be ready for the monarch butterflies. In the... Okay, and then she's got another one over here. Now, what did you say you had planted That's in all this herbs. one? That's herbs. That's herbs. So again, Your basic she's got herbs. her terracotta plant there, and um, or terracotta planter there, <laughs> and she's put these. Uh, she strategically placed them underneath, especially this one over here, because apparently she waters that and it uh, it likes to drip. Uh, so she's got that all figured out. Uh, so that's it. So that is uh, all set up. So next weekend we will have the uh, seed swap going on. Uh, and if you're interested and in the area, uh, you can always check out our Facebook uh, page and uh, we've got an event on there. Uh, that you can click on if you're interested or going. Uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.